Textiles are probably the most common and varied materials in historic furnished rooms. They are also among the most vulnerable. Like the cotton cloth you use for cleaning, textiles entrap dirt. Some are subject to attack by insects. Sunlight fades colors and breaks down fibers. Chairs invite sitting, and carpets are literally walked on. Keeping traffic off of historic carpets is the best means of protecting them. Vacuuming is the only routine cleaning you will do and should be limited to high traffic areas. Frequency will depend on the level of visitation and the amount of dirt that accumulates. Use a canister type vacuum that permits low suction. Check the condition of the pile. If it is in good condition with no loose fibers, use the floor attachment, running it gently over the surface. Vacuum in the direction of the pile. Where carpet runners are used, the area near the runners will be vacuumed more frequently than the rest of the carpet. On small carpets, kneel for better control. If the carpet is weak or displays loose fibers, you will need to vacuum through a screen. You can buy fiberglass screening, the type used to make window screens, at a hardware store. Cut various sizes and finish the edges with fabric tape. Vacuum with a padding lifting motion. Move the brush gently up and down, not side to side. It may be necessary to tweeze off stubborn lint and dirt. Always cover end fringes with a screen before vacuuming. Use tweezers to remove particles that don't pass through the screen. Always run your vacuum at less than full suction and never use a mechanized beater bar or rotary brush attachment on an historic carpet. Change vacuum bags when they are half full to be sure dust is being collected in the bag rather than being blown about the room. Use care not to hit furniture legs or baseboard moldings. Furniture that is delicate or in tight quarters should be protected. Although vacuuming won't remove every stain, never attempt to wash or spot clean an historic carpet. Normal foot traffic is abuse for an historic carpet. Cushion your carpets with underlayment. And if furniture is placed on the carpet, protective cups or plexiglass squares should be set under the feet or wheels. Use the same cleaning techniques on reproduction textiles. These items are costly and you'll want to maximize their useful life. When you see what prolonged exposure to sun can do to fabric, you understand just how fragile historic furnishings can be. Inspect drapes and curtains carefully before cleaning. If they are in good condition, release tiebacks and ease fabric out. Vacuum with a round brush attachment, adjusting suction to suit the materials. Be careful not to pull down on the fabric. Be especially careful in areas with metallic threads, braids, trim, or worn areas. Remember to wash your hands often when working with textiles. Vacuum stable upholstered furniture gently using a clean upholstery brush attachment. Adjust suction as needed. If the upholstery is fragile or worn, use a protective screen and vacuum without touching the area. Remember not to rub upholstery surfaces, but move the attachment gently along the surface with the lightest pressure. Never exert pressure against an upholstered panel, particularly unpadded backs and sides. Dust corners and other hard to reach areas with a clean soft brush using the vacuum hose to catch dislodged dust. Sometimes 
Textiles reach a point where there's nothing to do except leave them alone. This chair, dating to the turn of the century, is an example. It isn't even cleaned anymore. Ideally, it should be taken off display and conserved, but for interpretive reasons, you might need to keep it in place. Moving a large carpet or other textile is a major operation requiring planning, coordination, and teamwork. The first step is to make a determination, probably with a conservator, that the object is sturdy enough to withstand moving. The carpet will be moved on this tube, which is covered with mylar to serve as a barrier. To loosen dirt and prevent fibers from being broken or crushed, pile carpets must be rolled with a pile side out. To begin, the carpet is turned upside down by flaking. In flaking, the carpet is folded back and forth upon itself. A fabric lead is needed to ease the start of rolling. Roll the carpet carefully onto the tube, wrap it in muslin, and carry it horizontally to its storage space. Storage is also horizontal. Flaking can also be used to move small textiles safely or to move back sections of a larger carpet for special events. Some points to remember about caring for textiles. Keep foot traffic off of carpets if possible. When vacuuming, use low suction. Use a screen to protect loose or damaged fabric. Empty the bag when it's half full. Move carpets in whole or in part by flaking. <laughs> 